it's not always easy keeping your house in order. But don't worry, help is at hand. Ah! Look at this! Oh. That is solid. You can take back control of your home with a number of common sense hacks. And the best thing, you still got all of your storage. Simple fixes. That'll do nicely. And clever cleans. That is just cleaning. Forget expensive renovations. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll show you how to make life-changing home improvements in just one day. I absolutely love it. I don't think it's ever looked that good before. The don't Bust the bank balance. Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. You managed to do this in a day. Absolutely brilliant. I'm getting your tear it off. Our team of experts is here to help. The old tool belt's coming out. Well, That's how I know you're serious. Master builder Tommy Walsh brings over 50 years of DIY experience. Solid as a rock. Maxine Dwyer runs one of the UK's top extreme cleaning companies. That's what I mean by squeaky clean. And creative carpenter Asher Edwards prides himself on being a perfectionist. I am good. Just a little bit. Cheers, 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 cheers. cheers. <laughs> so which household has sent a distress call today? Hi, we're the Newbries and we need some help. Rachel and her two children, Caleb and Ashton, moved into their semi-detached council house in Newport, South Wales, just over a year ago. After getting the house, trying to run the family, everything's just gone on top of me and I can move for boxes, basically. Like over 50% of UK businesses, Rachel runs her craft company from home. I make bespoke baby items, personalised, from bedding to birthday sets. I work as many hours as I can. The business dominates every room. This is my living room. It's taken over my life, basically. Boxes everywhere. And some work-life balance is desperately needed. Am I always too tired to clean up? The last time I'd done a deep clean of the house would be the day I moved in. And there's one room that's purely a dumping ground. This is where it should be a utility room. At the moment, as you can see, it is everything and anything. <laughs> Even though the fridge takes up half of the room, I just can't find nothing. Lost to the cause. Rachel and her young family are in dire need of assistance. This is my dream house, but finding anything has become a nightmare, and we really, really need your help. It's the day of the big clean and fix. Make sure your telly's off. With the team on their way, the family head out to give them free reign. Look, they all got solar panels on their roofs. To prove you can make a difference in just one day and on a family-friendly budget. Look at that. Fly trap. <laughs> Day. That might need changing that. Workstation opposite the sink. That shouldn't really work, should it? I'll go in here. <laughs> Obviously, storage problems, clutter is an issue mm. here. This is the family lounge, which has sort of been split as a workstation over there. And the sofas are laid out in such a position as to try and accommodate that, but not very successful. And it doesn't look like family dining has been on the schedules for some time. Yeah, well, this workstation is obviously a bit of an issue because all the storage is on the surface or in boxes here. We sort of need to redirect Rachel so that everything sort of has its space. Now, we also have a piece of furniture, which is a writing desk, and I think we can upcycle that to make that into the workstation storage unit. So this workspace shouldn't really be here in the kitchen. This has to come out of here, to be honest. That's my first plan. This comes out, and then she'll have extra space for all her other bits and bobs that are lying around. 
Asher's utility room could be the answer to all Rachel's storage problems. First things first, we need a good clear right in it. And then if I move this into a better space... Hmm. All right, we need to clean in there first. I can't even think straight. With their three problem areas identified, the team have their missions for the day. The chaotic living room needs defined work and family zones. With Tommy providing a new workstation and a general freshen-up. Maxine will reclaim the kitchen, banish Rachel's work clutter and give the downstairs a declutter and deep clean. Asher will transform the utility room from a dumping ground into a smart storage space that will support Rachel's home sewing business. What you got for me? All this in one day and on a minimal budget. I don't know what that is. There's lots of stuff in here, isn't there? There's lots of stuff, yeah. I'll take them out and you can okay. have a look around. In the utility room, the newly cleared space is giving Asher inspiration. The first thing I want to do is move this refrigerator from this corner into the home where it's meant to be. I know why they didn't fit it, because the worktop is a bit too long. So if I cut the worktop back, and then I'll be able to slide the refrigerator in. In the living room, Tommy needs to decide how best to split one space into three. I know I'm no Da Vinci, but it does help a little bit if you come in and sort of do a sketch of the layout of the space so you have an overall idea of what you want to achieve. You've got your dining table back and chairs ready for family to sit down. It's very important the family eat together. And then, of course, the workstation is over in the corner, and I think this will transform the way they live. Just in case, you never know, I'm just going to sign this. You never know. <laughs> In the kitchen, Maxine is continuing to try to bring order to chaos. First of all, I need a clear surface. Mm. Put this on this side. This should be in the lounge or something. Yeah. I gotta get put it down here. Look at this. Mm. Perfect. Can you see how clear and decluttered this place could look if there was nothing there? Tommy is doing one of the simplest things to freshen up a tired space. You always start from the top and work your way down. So the ceiling, paint that first, then the walls, cutting it down, then the skirtings and architraves and all the woodwork. Now time for the roller. To finish off the kitchen, Maxine is tackling the appliance that Brits put off cleaning the longest. On average, waiting 18 months between cleans. I need to clean the oven. But first of all, I have to warm it up because it'll make it easier for me to clean. And before I clean it, I have to let it cool down just for a little bit. So it's going to go on for about 10 minutes. To make the most of the space in the utility room, precision okay. is key. So I'm going to use my jigsaw to cut this worktop. So this metal cap will cover the rough cut on the worktop. This is the only part of the worktop that needs to be crisp. Firstly, what I'm going to do is use a piece of masking tape. This does two things for me. One, I can draw on top of this so I can see my pencil line. And two, it saves the worktop from chipping when I'm cutting through. Maxine has heated the oven and let it cool down just enough for her deep clean. She has another homemade cleaning solution that is perfect for this job. I have got 100 ml of white vinegar. I'm going to put about eight heaped teaspoons of baking powder in this vinegar. Take your time and do it, because otherwise it will really bubble up and go all over the place. See? The consistency we want is a gritty. I can feel the grit in this. And that's what you need. The fine grit is what does the, the rubbing. It works on the grease and it gets rid of all the grease and the grime that is on the oven door. There we go. Look at this. I'm going to smear this on here. Look at that. Can you see that already? It's working good. Look. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I don't even need a rag. Food residue on ovens is typically acidic. 
baking powder neutralises these acids and breaks down the grease. Absolutely effortless clean. Look at that. White vinegar and baking powder. Wow. Can you believe it? I... I can't. Ha, ha, ha! Asher is using a right-angle jigsaw to achieve a straight line. It's always best to check your measurements several times. Just double checking. Safety specs. Uh -huh. Protective gear is an absolute must when sewing, as there are an average of 15,000 sew accidents per year in the UK. I'm just going to use my multi tool to get that last little cut the jigsaw couldn't make. A multi-tool is a power tool that has different uses when you attach different tool heads like this blade and can be hired for around £20 per day. Beautiful. Let's have a look at this cut. Ooh, crispy, clean, beautiful. So now this is definitely big enough to fit the refrigerator. We're good to go. Maxine! Hey, Asha! Whenever you got your knee pads on, I know you mean business. Exactly. What's going on? Look! You're joking. Wait, did you just do this? Yes, man! You can see right through. Look at the solution. It's yeah. literally just dripping off. Look at that! Right here. Respect. Come there on. You go. <laughs> Lovely. I've got it all on my hands now. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's non harsh chemical, so you're all right. All right. Ooh. See you later. Having created space for the fridge, it's time for Asha to see if it fits. Rock and roll it out. Yeah. Ready? That's it. Send her home. Beautiful. It's freed up all this side to put new units in. You can put shelves or whatever and stack stuff up. You can get rid of all that stuff, can't you? All the yeah. stuff you've got in the kitchen, reorganise what's shared here. It's a game changer. In the living room, Rachel's work area has spread dramatically. So Tommy's solution is to upcycle a second-hand writing desk he sourced online into a bespoke sewing station. What I'm attempting to do is using this orbital sander with a very fine disc, just take off the lacquer, take the varnish off, and give it a lovely smooth finish. And then I'll apply a primer undercoat and a top coat of the colour that we choose, and that should transform this bit of furniture. I mean, we only paid £50 for this second hand, and it's about £300 worth of oak in the manufacture of this, if you was to buy just the wood today. Now, the orbital sander, or any electric sander, is OK when you're doing the flat stuff. But when it comes to the more intricate detail, then, of course, you have to do it all by hand. So I normally use the old disc pads when they're worn down a bit, and that makes them just about right for working on this by hand, because when it comes to this detail, sort of reeded, you know, it's lovely, and I'd like that to be shown more clearly. It takes a bit of elbow grease, but anything worthwhile takes some effort. Approximately 11 million pieces of furniture are sent to the tip every year, when, with a little know-how, they could be upcycled and repurposed for modern-day use. So this has got a, a split in it, yeah, and that's something that we've got to fix. So what I intend, I'm going to attempt to do is to put the glue in there, run it all the way up, squeeze it in, and then cramp it between there and that side tight, and that should close the gap until the glue goes off. Having cleared space in the utility room, Asher is preparing the simplest and most effective way of providing more storage. Yes, it's flatback furniture. First things first, ripping it open, you don't want to use a knife. It says it on the box. You don't want to damage or cut any of the faces or panels on the inside. So, a little bit of working around the edges. Open this bad boy up. Step number two. Instructions, we don't want them. I'm joking, I'm joking, we need them. 
I haven't made this before, so I'm going to do, do a quick read through the instructions. Organisation is crucial for building a flat pack. Your bag of goodies, keep them to one side. This bad boy goes like that. Step one. Step two. Brilliant progress. Loving it. Oh, we missed a step. But well, it's all right. Sometimes in life, you know, you just need to go backwards to go forwards. You know what it's nice to know? Old Magic Hands, you know, qualified carpenter joiner. Oh, don't say it. Can still make don't the occasional it. mistake when it comes to a flat pack. We're having a few small technical difficulties, but nothing that we can't resolve. I know what happened. <laughs> Did you say read the instructions quickly? Maybe. <laughs> Always read the instructions slowly and read them twice. <laughs> then you won't make any mistakes. From flat pack to upcycling, attention to detail is key. It's best to spend a bit of time before you paint it, prepping it to make sure you're right, then half prepping it, painting it, and then be dissatisfied with it. Having finished the kitchen... Come, guys! Maxine is ready to take on the lounge. Maxine! Can I have a hand, please? Of course you can. Four hands. So what do you want us to do? This heavy sofa, I need this flipped around and put over there, please. Look at Tommy getting ready. They're ready to roll already. <laughs> Come on, then. One, two, three, up we go. Up. Hey, hey, hey. Remember, when lifting heavy furniture, always lift from the knees to prevent injuries. Mind your knees. I'll put my side down. Yeah. We turn, go up with that end, spin around. Tommy, you're a genius. <laughs> yeah, if only. Oh, yeah, it's just Tommy doing it. Yeah, give him all the praise. It's fine. Don't no worry about me, Maxine. It's OK. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's too late now. The damage is done. I don't want to hear it. You are a genius. Oh, <laughs> you don't want to give me no credit, Maxine. It's OK. Push it up, but don't touch the wall, please. No, wash it and clean it. That's it. Moving the furniture six inches away from the wall increases airflow and can protect against damp patches. Thank you, guys. No problem. Thank you very much. That's oh, OK. I'm going to get vacuuming now. Oh, let me get the vacuum cleaner. It's mid-afternoon, and Rachel and her boys are returning to the house in a couple of hours. Right, well, I've finished all the sanding there, finally, and uh, I'm just cleaning it off now with some white spirit um, that takes the dust off and gets it ready for the next coat of paint. This goes along here. Ooh, beautiful. Asher has a hack to help speed things up even more. I've found the perfect size drill bit in my van, so I don't need to use this Allen key to tighten up these screws. Victory! So we've got the new school working on the new unit and the old school working on the old unit. Be careful. <laughs> You're on dodgy ground there, son. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this in. Can you manage it? Yeah, mate. Beautiful. With the afternoon almost over, Maxine has turned dirt detective. Let me show you where the worst places have a look. Sofas are a haven for bacteria. A study in 2013 found that there was 12 times the amount on the arm of a sofa than on a toilet seat. We had a dog at one point. That's dog fur. All in the cracks and crevices. Someone's wet it often enough. Look. Wow. OK. I'm done with the vacuuming. When you're sort of upcycling and refurbing old furniture and it means you've got to paint it, the finish is only as good as the prep work that goes beforehand. Tommy's using a water-based primer, which not only dries quicker, but has fewer harmful chemicals than its oil-based alternative. I'd say this would be ready to get another coat in an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Rachel is desperate for a clean space in the living room to have a family dinner. 
Now that it's cleared, Maxine just has to add a little sparkle. I'm going to give the table a wash. Use a microfiber to wash it. Up here, around here. You can see the soap, look, there you go. And then in the middle. And this, scourer, to get rid of the stubborn marks. Back outside, Tommy, like his writing desk, is primed and ready for painting. Now, this paint is furniture paint, chalky finish, quick dry, touch dry in an hour. So it's perfect for upcycling, for wood, melamine and MDF. So, see, this is oak, so this will be perfect for it. Wow! We're nearly there already. I've just got this tempered glass smoked one to do. I can see the dust, clearly see the dust. Oh, dear. This is very dusty indeed. Look at this. I'm telling you, this is sheer dust. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to sparkle it up with some newspaper and some white vinegar. Crumple it up. Right, a good amount on. <sighs> Newspaper is effective as it's made of dense fibres that contain no solid scratching materials. It will be streak free. Look at this, look, see, just like this. Wonderful. Look at that. You ready? I'll go backwards. Okay. There's just one addition needed to finish off the space. Maxine! Wow, look at this! Oh, I love the colour. Look at this. <coughs> Honestly, where's the sewing machine going? On the top, when it's not in use. Ash has drilled a hole in the back, so when she's using it, you pull these out. Yes. Right, like that. Yes. And sit that there, then you can put the, the sewing machine from there, there, and you've got all your bits and pieces and everything there, and in all the drawers. So this can be a chair under here, proper workstation. When it's finished, put the sewing machine up there or in here, and then push that up, shut that down, and work for the day is over. <laughs> That's brilliant! Well done! Yes. This elegant upcycled desk is ready for business. That's absolutely Wonderful. Let me just stand over there and look at this room compared to what it was like this morning. It's just unbelievable, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes. You're not in the same house. No! Exactly. She's got her home now. With the family on their way, there's just time for some last minute adjustments. And a few finishing touches. And they're done. After a long day, Maxine and Asha depart, leaving Tommy behind to greet Rachel. We hope you enjoy your new space from the Clean It, Fix It team. Kiss. Right, Rachel, come on through. Hi, nice to meet you. Very nice to see you. And this is your first surprise. Oh, my God, <laughs> where's everything gone? Before, the kitchen was overflowing with Rachel's work gear and every surface was covered. Maxine has tidied away the clutter to reveal the kitchen underneath and given it the first thorough clean for a year. Maxine has been working on this very hard today and she's made a massive change. So, are you happy with what you see? I love it. One satisfied customer in the kitchen. What will she think of the new utility room? Oh, my God. The utility room was a cluttered mess, with no useful storage space for Rachel's business. With Asha clearing it and moving the fridge, there is now more room. And with the help of some flat pack units and shelves, Rachel can organise her materials. Have a look behind the door. Oh, my God! I don't have to move the fridge then every time I've got to open it. And this is all for your... Oh, my God, I'm so in my cottons, eh? <laughs> Everything. Look, all these new shelves and the I love them. Units. I love it. I absolutely love it. Look, I shake in. 
He did a lot of repairs, Asher, in here today. I, I really couldn't see you getting it done in a day, no way. And the idea is to make it easy for you to organise oh, and continue keeping it at hand so, so that you're not going to spend half your time looking for everything because you'll know where it, where it is. Yeah, that was my main problem. I'd spend most of the afternoon finding the materials I need to do an order. Well, the idea is to try and make it a bit easier for you. That's what we're here oh, for. Oh, it's lush. I love it. This morning, the lounge was overflowing with Rachel's work stock and the dining table hadn't been used in months. After clearing the clutter, there are three distinct zones. An upcycled writing desk for her to sit at and sew, a rearranged clean seating area and a sparkling dining table for all the family to sit around. They saved my eyes. What do you think? I absolutely love it. Come in. Oh, my God, I love it. Come in and savour it. I've given you your dining area back. <sighs> so, Rachel, what do you think? I adore it. I want to show you something that I've done for you today. This was a lovely writing desk. So we thought that if you did that and then take down your sewing machine. In all these nooks and crannies is your cottons, all your ribbons, your needles. And of course, you've got four drawers below for you to put all the materials in there for your craft. When you're finished, you just push that away. And now your station is all completely hidden. The whole purpose is to give you some of your life back. I love it. Absolutely love it, Richard. Rachel, I really hope you enjoy your new house as it is. I just wish you the best for the future. Thank you ever so much. What a lovely person. It's really nice to have been able to do something for Rachel. She just deserves a break. And if nothing else, at least we've given her a springboard to get in her life reorganised again so that she can have some sort of normality. Good luck. I hope you enjoy it, Rachel.